Hi, welcome to this week's Macworld video. I'm your host, Macworld Senior Editor Chris Breen. During the past few weeks, we've been talking an awful lot about Leopard, and we should because it's a very important topic. However, I thought this week I'd provide a little break in the form of this, the iPod. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you some very cool tips for manually managing your media. We'll start by copying media directly to the iPod. Most people believe that you have to add your media to your iTunes library and then sync your iPod to that library. This is not necessarily so. Attach your iPod to your Mac and wait for it to appear in iTunes source list. Select the iPod in the Summary tab and enable the Manually Manage Music and Videos option. Then click Apply. Now locate some iPod compatible media that you'd like to move to the iPod, music or video files that you've burned to a DVD for example, and simply drag them to the iPod's icon in the source list. They'll be copied without being added to the iTunes library. This is very useful for those who don't have the hard drive capacity to store all the media they'd ultimately like to put on their iPods. Ah, but check this out. When you move video that you haven't purchased from the iTunes store to the iPod in this way, iTunes treats it like a movie and adds it to the movies playlist rather than TV shows or music video, for example. To change this, simply select the video, press Command-I to bring up the info window, click the Video tab, choose the correct video type from the Video Kind pop-up menu. You can also enter show name, season number, and episode number if you like, and click OK. This causes the video to be correctly filed on your iPod. Okay, let's take this another step. Suppose, like many of us, you have multiple iPods. You take one to the office where you've synced it with that office computer's music library. You bring it home, you suddenly think, gosh, I would really like to have this music on this iPod that I use at home. How do I transfer them? Just like this. Download Tinker Tool from this website, launch it, and in the Finder tab, enable Show Hidden and System Files, and click Relaunch Finder. Plug both iPods into your Mac, double-click the one that holds the media you want to copy, and follow this path, iPod underscore Control, Music, and then the F folders inside the Music folder. These F folders hold the media. Open an F folder and select some media. Drag it to the other iPod's icon in the source list. The media will copy even protected media you've purchased from the iTunes store. You'll notice that the iPod's files have four letter names, making them impossible to identify. However, when you move them to the other iPod, they adopt their real names. And here's one final trick for those of you who've taken your iPod and your laptop on the road. Okay, that media is now on the iPod. Wouldn't it be great if you could play its music through another computer's speakers or watch its video on that other computer's monitor without copying the media to that computer? Well, you can. With the iPod in manual mode, attach it to another computer and wait for it to appear in iTunes source list. Select a chunk of media, a movie for example, and click iTunes play button the media will play from the iPod through the computer. This is a very useful technique for when you're on the road with your laptop and prefer to view video at a larger size than is offered by your iPod. And there you have it, three handy tips for an iPod in manual mode. I hope you found them helpful. For more information on all things iPod and iTunes, check out PlaylistMag.com as well as, of course, Macworld.com. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you around. Thank you.